Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with Doctor Who. Uh, just as a quick note, let's just get this out of the way. First thing, I'm sick. <laughs> I got sick again. I think it's just a cold, though. It's not uh, anything too terrible like I may have gotten last year. And as you can hear, I'm, you may honestly, like you might hear a little bit of nasaliness in my voice, but other than that, I probably look and act just fine. But uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Also, you can probably see there's something here behind the TARDIS. That is my roll of toilet paper that I am using as Kleenex. So, um, tried to hide that, like, just out of the way, if I can. Vaguely. Okay, anyway. So, I just wanted to get that out of the way. I am a little sick, but I'm only a little sick. It's not, not like last year. <laughs> it's not like last year when I caught the big C. Um, that, I guess that could be different. There could be different contexts for that. The big context, let's call it that. Um, anywho, last time on Doctor Who, we had Wild Blue Yonder, where the Doctor and Donna were taken to the ship out past the edge of the universe. And um, there were these two... Well, I want to call them things, but they were not things. Um, and they started to take thing shape... And, uh, eventually, uh, they started to act like the Doctor and Donna, and it was a very interesting, good episode that ended with, uh, the destruction of the ship, and the Doctor and Donna making it back to Earth, where they ran into good old Wilf. Uh, and I have since learned that Wilf will not be appearing in this episode, they were only able to film the one scene with him last episode, but that's just fine. That is absolutely just fine. It's just good to see that man one last time. So, so yeah. Um, that was pretty much it. It was a really good episode, and I'm excited to see where we're going this time. And this time, uh, we have a guest star. Uh, a guest star that we all, we all know who this is. A, we know who the actor is. Very big actor here on Doctor Who today. But B, uh, we do also have a returning character, I believe. A character from long since past in the first Doctor's era. Now, I was actually going to re-watch that episode, but I haven't, so... I don't know. I'm gonna hope I remember enough about that episode to where if there are references to the past, hopefully I will pick up on them. If I remember correctly, that episode... It was a first Doctor episode. It was when they wanted to... It was like the first attempt at getting rid of Hartnell, and he became invisible for like an episode, and the plan was when they brought him back, he would just be a different actor, but they didn't go through with that, so he would, they just kept uh, William Hartnell. Um, and I believe he had Stephen and, I want to say Dodo at the time, as his companions, so that was a long time ago, a very, very long time ago. Now my nose is a little runny. One sec. And I got a trash can just off screen, so... Yeah, we're in great shape today. So I'm probably not going to be yelling too much in this. But... Eh, I, I bet you people are going to be like, Good, quit your friggin' yelling all the time. Every time there's a big hype moment, I just go... Urgh. I probably can't do that today, so... Anywho. So yeah, we have a returning character today. Uh, which, I mean, we all... Like, look, I would love to be like, oh, I'm not spoiled on that, but I feel, I feel like since it was announced, we all kind of knew who it was going to be, somehow. Um, so yeah, so, it'll be interesting, I hope it's a, I hope they use them good, I'm sure they will, but, uh, cause the last time I saw this character, I did not care for that episode, so, um, yeah. I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, and hopefully there are no issues with copyright on this episode. I guess, I guess I'll find out. But uh, sound off in the comments somewhere if you're watching this on Daily Motion or not. Hopefully you're not because, good lord, who needs to be subjected to Daily Motion? Um, now that I think about it, I don't know where comments are on Daily Motion. But anyway, uh, so hopefully everything's fine here on YouTube, so... Uh, with that said, why don't we just go ahead and jump right into this episode, the third part of the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. Here we go. Ah, oh, just go straight to him. Is it not? Ready now? I think so. 
May God go with us. All right, this is pretty cool. The television. Oh, that's just legitimately terrifying. I'll need a moving image. Hmm. Ugh. Oh. Uh. That wee chap's about to change the world. Imagine what he was. <laughs> Ugh. Television was a mistake. Oh god. The giggle. I hate the word giggle. I'm just gonna say that now. Today. Chaos roams the streets. Due to the invention of television, 100 years ago. It's my life, not yours. Ugh. Uh, it's just in the background. Right just hanging out. Because it all changed two days ago. Everyone started thinking they're right. All the time. Oh, that is a problem. Change their mind. Hey, never mind about us. I want my friend dad safe, alright? You got that? Yes, ma'am. You keep your family safe. You're going with the doctor. <laughs> Ominous Frenchman. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, Wolf has been sent to safety. Good. Oh, that's a unit building. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, if the Brigadier could see this place. Robots and insects and yetis and clones. But what do we do this time, Doctor? How do we fight the human race? Good question. You know, this almost seems like a Torchwood episode. Oh. That is the best news, Melanie. Hello. Oh, Mel. We'll catch up later. We haven't got time. <laughs> I used to be like you. I was one of his companions. I wasn't the first redhead. <laughs> that was me. Although I don't say companion. Yeah. That sounds like we park him on the seafront at Western Superman. <laughs> is Park rude? Borderline. Yeah. And station. <laughs> what do I care? I mean, seriously! Why should I care about you? No change there, though. It's really just everyone is being honest and open. Busy day? Why do you want to know? <laughs> I'm just asking. Is that a problem? There it goes. That's for her in that chair. I've seen you walk. I've seen you walking. Don't deny it! No, you can't stop me. It's about time you heard the truth. Activate Phoenix. And good. Could we have had a demonstration that didn't humiliate Kate in front of everyone? I'm wearing a Z-Dex just in case, but I've been fine. Well, no more opinionated than usual. <laughs> Maybe long-term travel in the TARDIS puts you out of sync. Perhaps. Why you give everyone a Z-Dex? <sighs> Imagine trying that. Yeah. They are using this to control us and monitor us. And microwave our brains. Oh my god. I am anti Z deck. Oh god. Can we filter this way? Commentary's off the wall today. The world is now 100% online. From the highest mountain to the deepest valley on earth, everyone is connected. Okay, I see a problem. What if it's a tune? What? I know we've only got minutes to live, but give me a second because I spent six months teaching my daughter how to play the recorder till she said this is not who I am. I'm going to start a whole other conversation, believe you me. But. La 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 la. Oh. Huh. What? What is it? Oh, they got it. I love when Donna just finds some obscure shit going on. Why are we all reacting to this one? I'm not. The Vlinks? Negative. No. Just the humans. I like the blinks. Oh, it's not a tune. It's a laugh. Huh. They giggle in everyone's head. Ugh. Uh. Every single one. Ugh. Uh. Screen. After screen. After screen. And every type of screen. Every type of screen. Everywhere. He's inside of all. Just gonna slide my phone over here. Ah, uh, uh, I knew I hated that thing. I hate puppets, man. Ugh. Television was a mistake. Bring my phone back, which is probably a bad idea. 
The human race might be clever and bright and brilliant. It's also savage and venal and relentless. All the anger out there on the street, the lies, the righteousness, that's human. That's you. That's who you are. So now you've got no control. Stupid, poisoning the world. And hating each other. You've never needed any help with that. Yeah. We can pick off a pebble on the moon. Trouble is taking out a South Korean satellite will have international consequences. So Go for it. Sorry, South Korea. You know what? The whole world doesn't need to be online. Sometimes I just want to be in a shack in the mountains. I fed the COSAC fake coordinates, so it's coming into UK orbit. Within range in three minutes. Oh, brilliant. Oh, Mel. Hello. Hi. They gotta stop bringing back companions before I watch them on Classico. Cause now I'm gonna have to rewatch this in like a year. I traveled the stars. Good old Sablon Glitz. He lived till he was 101. Whoa. Died falling over a whiskey bottle. It's a perfect way to go. <laughs> he had this great big Viking funeral, and I thought, time to go home. Meh. So I got a lift off a of Zingo and came back to Earth. What's a Zingo? It's the thing you get a lift off. <laughs> and then offered me a job. All right. In a year, I'm gonna know the context of this. But that's better than most people that are watching this episode. <laughs> Some people watching this episode will never watch classic Doctor Who, so... If we survive this, you should think about joining UNIT. How much per year? 60,000. <laughs> 120 plus five weeks holiday. Done. Wow. <laughs> Good job. She just got bank. Back to the TARDIS. You never tell me to do that. Oh, but he is recognizing me. Oh. Uh. Are you? Oh. So long ago, they colorized it too. Uh, that was cool. This does bring up the question: What is the toy maker? I love how they're giving it such weight and importance to an episode of Doctor Who that was honestly pretty bad. But how does this even make sense? Because I've seen some things with you. I've seen Ood, Davros. Mm. I mean, the Adipose, for God's sake. Ugh, don't that remind me. That's the problem with the toy maker. He has no logic. When I was young. Mm. I was so sure of myself. I he was young. I let the TARDIS fall into another realm, a hollow beneath the under-universe, where science is a game and all of us are toys. But you escaped. I beat the time maker, I won his game, but now he's here. He's found his way into reality. So long ago. It's essentially 60 years ago that episode happened. I'm all Sonic and TARDIS and Time Lord, take that away. Take away the toys. Hmm. What am I? What am I now? Eh. He doesn't even know if he is the doctor. Anyway, you beat him before. That's the problem. I'll tell him I'll lose next time. Eh. That's more like that. You beat him before, back when there wasn't say, such a I budget. Did what I did last time. Games don't have a memory. Every game starts from scratch. That's true. I'm so dumb. My name's Donna, and I warn you now, if this is a trick, I will kill you. <laughs> kick it, kick it, kick it, kick it! No, the sticky barbies weep. The sticky barbies can't uh, I hate dolls so much. An endless night. Mama! Ugh. Sticky barbies are so sweet. <laughs> 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 Absolutely terrifying, good lord. My name's Donna. Now I think you're a goner. Oh, oh. Anything to add? Good job, Donna. This is why Donna's the best. She'll just unleash on something. He met a friend called Amy Pont. Oh, Amy. Amy Pont. The V Pink Angel, and she died. Eh. She died of old age. Well, that's all right then. <laughs> old age. 
was meeting Clara. Clara. Aww. But she was killed by a bird. <laughs> she still survives in her last second of life. Well, that's all right then. <laughs> well, if he has to slip into the American. Bill. Bill. But she was killed by the Cybermen. And her consciousness survives. Oh, well, that's all right then. Eh. And then there came the flood. Ah, uh, you're cutting out Ryan and Graham. They survived. <laughs> and Yaz. And Dan. I challenge you to a game. Ugh. Yu-Gi-Oh! Best of three. The toy maker would play like tear limits or something. The master was dying and begged for his life with one final game. And when he lost, I sealed him for all eternity inside my gold tooth. Duh. There's only one player I didn't dare face. The one who waits. Who's that? I saw it hiding and I ran. Who? What do you mean? <laughs> That's someone else's game. Wait, okay, hang on. What about the master? I made every opinion supreme. That's the game of the 21st century. <laughs> they shout, and they type, and they cancel. Oh, God. So I fixed it. Now everybody wins. Oh, that is a problem. And everyone loses. The never-ending game. And when everyone wins, no one will. I won the game. Many years ago, you won today. Which leaves us equal. <laughs> but you know. Two players are bound by one inviolable rule. Tiebreaker. Best of three. Oh. Best of three. Best of three. Then let's make it 2023. Donna! I'm already running! <laughs> Go to the side! Okay, that won't work. Could you turn that off, please? Who is that? Oh, I think he's there. Uh oh. Oh, good grief. Oh, oh god. <laughs> he's so terrifying. He just pops out of- You know what? He's like Q on Star Trek, honestly. Oh, but he came first. Oh! That looked like it hurt. Oh, uh, it's not gonna work. Whoop! They are balls. Ah! What happened to them? They're dead. I'm sorry. Uh. Just stop it. A toy maker. How does he do that? The yes. I need those scans. I need those results. If I told you he manipulates atoms with the power of thought, would you believe it? Me. Yeah. Is that what he does? No. no. So come with me. Leave this tiny world. We can take your games back to the stars. We can play across the cosmos. We can be celestial. Meh. Shackles to their bedrooms with their joysticks and their buttons. Meh. You make games out of bricks falling upon other bricks. You are exceptional. <laughs> Tetris. Then there are the mind games. Oh, the dating and ghosting, the deceit and the control. You make me dizzy. Oh. I'm in no hurry to leave this place. This is such a good time to bring back the toy maker. One more game! Ooh! Oh my gosh! I played the first game with one doctor. I played the second game with this doctor. Therefore, your own rules have decreed. I play the third game with the next doctor. He's, he's forcing him to regenerate? Because every single one of you is fantastic. Oh boy, he has to do this for a third time. <laughs> I feel like that should be the doctor's last words every time. Uh. What's happening? It stopped. Could you. Pull? Could I? What? Can you? What do you mean? What, the arms? Pull. Ow! Wait. Oh, oh don't tell me. And they're shooting at what? Yo, me. Blimey. Man. 
Let's finish it. Does this work? I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is getting out of hand now. There are two of them in the man doesn't have pants. By generation. <laughs> I have by generated. There's no such thing. By generation is supposed to be a myth, but <sighs> Look at me. <laughs> yeah, myth, 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 Mel. What do you think? I think you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> he sure is you're something. Beautiful. Yeah. Still. Do you come in a range of colors? Yes. <laughs> Wait, if I can interrupt. Name your challenge, Doctor. You said it. The first game ever. The ball. Catch. Three way catch. Of Oh, I just noticed, like, they really split his clothes, too. Ooh. Good catch, Doc. Excellent save, Doc. Hey! I'm on your side! I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> oh, this is fun. Honestly, this is the exact speed of game they should have had 60 years ago. Oh! You lost! We won! Game over! Oh! My legions are coming! The legions? So, uh. Now what happens? We did it. But how many died down there? Yeah. It's not your fault. The man who you regrets. I've got you. Aww. Yeah. It's like the meme of Obama giving himself the medal. <laughs> oh, the tooth. Oh, don't do it again, for goodness sake. How's it gonna work? Yeah. That doctor. That first met the toy maker never, ever stopped. That's true. It's on trial, exiled, key to time, all uh, the devastation of Logopolis. Logopolis. Adric. 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 Don't make me cry Sorry. about Adric. Sarah Jane has gone. Can you believe that for a second? I loved her. <sighs> I loved her. I'll actually cry about Sarah Jane. And Rose, we fought. The gods of Ragnarok, and we didn't stop for a second to say, What the hell? <laughs> These are some deep cuts. I'm fine because you fix yourself. We're time lords, we're doing rehab out of order. <laughs> but I could never let the TARDIS go. Never. It would hurt. And yet you won't. What's it? Oh, he's got an idea. What the hell is that? What if the toy maker's domain is still lingering? Oh. Wish me luck. What for? He's gonna split the TARDIS the in two. You get a prize, honey. Here is mine. Oh. Oh look. Oh. Oh, that's not bad. Wheelchair accessible. At last, you finally caught up with the twenty-first century. Yeah. <laughs> But you didn't let her in. So off you pop, one man. <laughs> You're the old man. You're older than me. <laughs> Actually, that is true. Yeah. He's younger because you came after him. So. You're the oldest doctor. Okay, <laughs> kid. I love you. Get out. <laughs> he's the oldest he's ever I'll been. Do that again. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Ah. Uh, farewell to the past. Uh, off to new beginnings. With my best friend, my brother-in-law, the evil stepmother. Oh, I have been <laughs> Oh. And Mad Auntie Mel. Oh, mad Auntie Mel. Oh, he's off shooting moles. Oh. Don't worry, I gave the moles a force field. I love the moles. You love the moles? I love them. <laughs> but here we are. 
Brother, no. Aww. Who'd have thought? I'll always be out I there. With the family. Again. Oh, Funny thing is, I fought all those battles for all those years. And now I know what for. <laughs> this. Man, go find Susan. <laughs> Like, I've never been so happy in my life. Oh. Uh, and off he pops. Ah, oh, Christmas. Oh. All right. We can officially throw out the numbers. Forget it. Ugh. If you want to get technical, and I don't think anyone does at this point, I guess, yeah, he, that's, he's the 14th Doctor, and now this is the 15th Doctor, or they're both the 14th Doctor, or, eh, I don't care. I've, I've ceased caring. But alright. I said I was going to be the one laughing in November. Well, it's December now, screwhead. So it doesn't... So I... Uh, I don't know. I win. I won the game. Now, I think we all won the game. Because that was a really good episode. And it's a good... It's a good lead-in to a new era. It is... Astounding how well they can use the Celestial Toy Maker in this episode, considering that episode was just not that good. I mean, the original Celestial Toy Maker episode. This episode was amazing. That original episode was not that great. <laughs> now, granted, part of... I will say part of the problem with that episode was the reconstruction. I know someone said that that episode is going to be animated soon, Sure, sure, but, um, but that original episode, that had some problems, problems, but that was a good way of bringing back the Celestial Toy Maker 60 years ago, just about, more 57, 58-ish, but still, <sighs> it's interesting that this, this is less of a retrospective of Doctor Who, like I feel like the 50th anniversary was, but I'm kind of okay with that. I'm kind of okay with, uh, with that. I, I, I'm more okay with, like, which, I mean, it is still kind of retrospective, you know. You have a returning villain from the first Doctor's era, and now, um... And there was a good amount of uh, remembering things. I mean, just having David Tennant and Donna there is really good for that. But you also have Mel, you have Kate, Unit itself. Um, so all of that, like, it's, it does still work. I, I love referencing everything, you know? Uh, going through, like, you know, Exile... You know, The Return, The Key to Time, Logopolis, Adric. And that that is good, too, because, like, with all the different, you know... With all the different companion deaths, the first one was Adric, you know? Love him or hate him. <laughs> Love him or hate him. And there are very strong opinions on Adric, and even we've had our opinions on Adric, but... But I like that. Man... You know, with every passing episode as well, I feel like, with every passing episode, I feel like it must be harder and harder not to have seen classic Doctor Who, you know? Like, and honestly, I guess that just amounts to each of the showrunners, honestly, and I'll put this on all three of them, honestly, that every showrunner feels more and more comfortable referencing the past, you know? But because of that, the further that's the further and further we go that 
modern audiences, gen- like, no, like, most people that watch this episode have no idea who the toy maker is. I guarantee you, you know? And I feel like the perfect example... Eh, I don't know. Eh, never mind. I was gonna call out another YouTube channel that hasn't seen classic Doctor Who, which, you know, it's not like it's mandatory or anything. You don't have to, you don't have to watch anything, but... Ugh. Oh, my nose got stuffed up, so... Um, but yeah, but that was interesting. That was a good use of the toy maker. And with a little, with a little foreboding of a legion that could be coming up with, uh, with Shooty Got Was Doctor, so. And just, like, what, I mean, a, a very good role also for Neil Patrick Harris, you know? Like, that's, I don't know, I don't know if I can say, like, oh, he's such a very prominent actor to have in Doctor Who, but, like, I don't know, there's just something about it. it's like, oh, we're going to bring in Neil Patrick Harris, and he's going to be the Celestial toy maker, a very minor villain from the first Doctor's era, like, but he plays it really well. Um, even all the accents and everything that, that he had to do, you know? Ugh, I'm gonna have to rewatch our reaction to the Celestial Toy Maker. I don't think I can rewatch the episode itself, but I will rewatch uh, the reaction we did because that was a rough episode. That was a very rough episode, but um, but still, again, I'm glad they did this. I'm glad they brought back the Toy Maker. I think that really worked. Um, I like the continual questions of the Doctor's identity. You know? And I, I just noticed that here on the notes. The continual... Like, there will always be... Ugh, there will always be questions, you know? I like that that's sort of his new thing. Because before, like, when we started with the ninth Doctor and the 10th Doctor... And I know I just threw out the numbers, but wow, we're just going to say 9 and 10. So, we're, we're basically... I'm going to say the numbers up to... 14 and then about you know when we get to this version of the doctor i'm just gonna throw it out you know but with the ninth and tenth doctors um i feel like you know th their their whole thing their angst basically was over the time war i do like going into this new era that it feels like the angst is going to be the Flux and the Timeless Child. And that's a really interesting idea, you know? And again, it's a it's a big, you know, middle finger to everyone who hates that. And if you hate it, that's fine. You know, if you hate that, you know, the Timeless Child, that's one thing. But that is going to be a continual thing throughout this, you know? And I like that idea, you know? So, yeah. Um, so, I like the Doctor still struggling with his identity, you know? What what is left of him, you know? Because when he says, you know, take away the TARDIS, the Time Lord, the, the Sonic, you know, take away everything, all of his toys, what is he, you know? Because he can't even claim, well, he is the Doctor, because he doesn't know what that means anymore, you know? Because honestly, like, just at the beginning there, without everything of the Timeless Child, there's already kind of an identity crisis of what is the doctor you know what is the doctor and honestly honestly the thing is like the thing is like that is that is an issue because that at first was just a name you know that was just a name that he chose you know it was the name that he chose it was the thing he was going to be the Doctor, a healer. And we had that with the, the Twelfth Doctor where he said, you know, at first it was just a name. But then I, you know, it was when he went to Scarrow for the first time that he truly thought about what is, who is the Doctor, you know? But now you have all of that with everything, even, you know, going with the War Doctor, who stopped calling himself the Doctor... And he, you know, going through that sort of identity crisis of who is the Doctor, and now just adding on another layer of it, you know, because what is the Doctor? Are they the timeless child? You know, 
And that's an interesting thing, you know? That's an interesting idea. What is the Doctor? What's left of the Doctor, you know? But I like that kind of being a continual thing, you know? I love... I absolutely love that they point out how many companions have died, you know? That Amy... Amy died, and Rory. They forgot Rory. Everyone forgets Rory. Uh, but Amy and Rory died. You know, it was like, oh, they lived to old age. Well, then it's okay then. I like I like that moment, you know? Uh, Clara, killed by a bird. It's like, oh, she exists in the last seconds of her life. Well, it's okay then. Bill was killed by a Cyberman. Oh, but her consciousness lives on. Oh, then it's okay then, you know? I, I like bringing that up, even though, obviously, the toy maker skips over, well, Ryan, Graham, Yaz, Dan, all four of them were completely fine. The best thing, honestly, of the Chibnall era was that the companions didn't have tragic endings, you know? Or endings of, like, well, then it's alright then, you know? And then, and then they bring in Mel... I, okay, I have not ever seen a single episode with Mel. Let's also put that out there, you know? Like, at least, at least uh, during The Power of the Doctor, when they brought back Tegan and Ace, I had seen episodes with Tegan and Ace. I have literally no frame of reference on Mel, you know? I feel like an average Doctor Who fan, but... They keep bringing back companions before I watch them on classic Doctor Who. So, again, in about a year, I'll be ready to be to come back to this episode and be like, Oh, I understand Mel now, you know? And it's always the same thing, you know? Sarah Jane, when they first introduced Sarah Jane, I hadn't even seen classic Doctor Who at that point. Um, or when they brought back uh, Joe on the Sarah Jane Adventures, I hadn't seen uh, enough of Joe at that point. So it's it's always the same thing. Last year, I barely had any context for Tegan and Ace. Uh, they gotta quit doing that. I don't know what else they can do now, though. Like, they've pretty much brought back everyone, and uh, at time of recording this, we just... Uh, we just a couple days ago recorded The Caves of Androzani, so we have a little bit of context, at least on Perry, so. And I think after, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think after Perry is Mel, so. I don't know, but I don't have any context about Mel, so. So I'm sorry, but I'm sure it was great moments having Mel, so. Um, we also had the Vlinks. I like that. There's just that. Uh, it's just an alien that works at unit. Cool. Honestly, you'd think we'd see more of that, you know. Uh oh, there were the dolls. The dolls that uh, that attacked Donna. I love when she goes into that and is like, "I'm Donna Noble. I'd like to help, but if you try any tricks, I will kill you." <laughs> it's just, I love. She's just had enough of this, you know. Like, that was really nice. I, I like that. And then she just beats the crap out of those dolls, you know? It really is just a runny nose at this point. Obviously, you can see I'm, I'm here, I'm up, I'm agile, you know? So, hopefully I'm not gonna wake up tomorrow just feeling like absolute garbage, so. The Master is a tooth? What's going on there? Um, so the Master... Where did we last see the Master? <laughs> It was. It would have been Power of the Doctor. What happened to him in that episode? Can I just look that up? I mean, we're caught up. I guess there's the question of which version of the Master, but... Eh. Can I just type the Master? No. The Master, Doctor Who. I just went to the... To the wiki page, TARDIS Fandom. And I just love seeing all of the... Uh, all of the different uh, masters. Delgado, Crispy, Anthony Ainley, Eric Roberts, a comic, an audio, Derek Jacoby, uh, another comic. What's his name? John Sim, 
Michelle Gomez, another audio, and Sasha Dwan. Oh, they actually have someone listed for his father. Goodness. The Time Lord Marnel was the Master's father and the previous owner of the Doctor's TARDIS. I'm assuming that's all, like, in books or something. Anyway, what happened to him? Am I going to be able to find it on here? You know what? I'm not going to be able to find it in that wiki, so I'm just going to give up immediately. <laughs> but the Master's a Tooth. You know, the interesting thing about that, though, I mean, the Master's still alive. Obviously. Um, I will say it's interesting. I love the shot where you just see the tooth and you just see a woman's hand pick it up. Because that directly mirrors the end of season three when when they pick up the ring. I see what you're, I see what you're doing there. Uh, the giggle. The giggle. I hate dolls. I, I just hate dolls like that i just do you know sometimes I, I i feel like i used to kind of tap dance around it. no i hate dolls no, i feel like almost nothing good can come from dolls like that you know i don't know like name a good name a good doll like a good doll that's not a monster i'll wait i'll wait anyway but the giggle that was interesting tying it into the history of tv I love, <laughs> uh, I love, I love the commentary, the social commentary in this one, because again, I feel like there's there's so many people like on Twitter or something that are like, oh, finally, Doctor Who's not going to be you know political or have social commentary or something, and then RTD is just like, yeah, bet, I love. That 2023 is the perfect time to bring back the toy maker, because everyone already plays games. A, they you know there's video games and all sorts of stuff like that, but also just mind games. You know, like I love that. I absolutely love that. You know, that was really funny. Um, what else? All right, I guess let's just talk about the big thing. By regeneration. So a by regeneration, a myth, a myth on Gallifrey. A by regeneration is when you regenerate, but your body splits between the new and the old version of you. Some, but it's a myth. It's something that has never happened before. To a time lord, which I like that idea. That this is this has never happened before. Um, and so now, now we have two versions. One that will be the main character of the show, and the other one who can finally stop and rest, you know? He'll still poke around sometimes. He'll still pop into the TARDIS and pop off to Mars or something. But, and presumably... Presumably, that means that this version, you know, the, the leftover version, I guess. There we go. The leftover doctor. We have a name. The leftover doctor. Uh, the leftover doctor presumably cannot regenerate again. If anything, he's, I guess he's more like the Metacrisis doctor. But he still has Time Lord physiology, you know? He just, I just assume... I assume that he cannot regenerate, you know? Now, it does bring up that the Doctor could... The leftover Doctor could come back at some point. I highly doubt it, though. I highly doubt it, though. Like, and especially, too, like, they're not going to bring him back... They're not going to bring him back and make him the main character for a full season or something, you know? That's not going to happen. And if that does happen, then I'm out. But that's not going to happen. Like, we're doing that just as a way of like, alright. You know, the Doctor can rest. And it's a mirror of... It's a mirror of Journey's End anyway. Except, instead of, you know... 
leaving everything in crap. We're leaving everything in a good place, you know? Donna and the family is all good. The other, the leftover doctor is good. And the main doctor now is off on his way to adventure. So, it is a mirror. But, boy, that's that's just interesting, man. And, you know, it's also... It's also interesting because it kind of also brings up, you know, like, what if back in the day they just had the balls to change the actor at the, you know, before the actual end of the episode, you know? Like, what if instead of, you know, the Tenth Doctor shooting the beams into the hand, thus preventing his regeneration, kind of, preventing the face change, what if... You know, just before that, the finale of that episode, he just changed into Matt Smith, you know? And you do kind of wonder, like, well, that could be that could be kind of interesting, you know? A doctor who has to find himself in the middle of a story that's ending, you know? And this kind of does that by giving us... By giving us Shudy Gatwa early, you know? Like, at what point... Yeah, so it was about... So, we had about, like, 15 minutes with him, which is so much more than we normally get, you know? 15 minutes, he's the fifth. No. No, because it wasn't even 15 minutes, it was, like, 18 minutes anyway, so... Well, yeah. That would have been funny, but... But, yeah. But that's that's an interesting idea, and I like that. That's a, it's a very interesting way of introducing the Doctor, the new version of the Doctor... And having the old version still there, you know? Like, it, it basically... Because that is also one thing with changing to a new Doctor is... You know, it's such a difficult thing. Like, you're always so sad when the Doctor regenerates. That, you know, suddenly... Matt Smith is here and everything's on fire. That you're just kind of sitting there like... Uh, I'm, I can't... Like, it's hard to get invested immediately... And you're just like, oh, who's this guy? But I want the doctor back, you know? So I like having both of them there. And then, you know, they're both happy to be together, you know? So it's such an interesting way of doing that. So. I like it. I feel like this basically, like... Like, this, honestly, is is such a great way to pass the torch. Because it, it kind of ensures that people lo watch this and they're like, Okay, yeah, I, I, I'm comfortable with this new guy, you know? So... So that was cool. <sighs> so yeah, so the leftover doctor. The leftover doctor will rest. He'll finally be at rest. I do hope. I, I, I think it would be really cool. And I like him, you know, staying with Donna. But I do also like the idea that he goes and finds Susan, you know. The last of his living family, you know. Um, so that was interesting. And also just the toy maker being like, you know, I've, I fought, the, I, I fought the doctor once, then I fought him again with a different face. Therefore, he needs a different face for the next one. But it backfired on him. <sighs> oh, yeah. Uh, by regeneration. How fascinating. I love to it split the clothes between them, you know? That... Uh, that that he got he got the button up shirt the tie and the underwear and I think the socks while the leftover doctor was left with the undershirt the vest the pants and the shoes that was really funny too like it's one of those things like you don't notice for at first and it's like wait a minute they split up the clothes specifically so that was funny and yeah, it's just good. And I, I, I love him, like, comforting the leftover Doctor, too. Like, I, I just really enjoy that, so. So, yeah. That is it for the 60th anniversary specials. But we are not done. We're gonna take a little break, thankfully, because I, I need to get over some stuff going on right now. But we will be back at some point. Uh, for the Christmas special, which will be Shooting Out was first episode. I'm excited. I'm very excited. And yeah, what did you guys think of the 60th anniversary? I think it's good. It's not quite, you know, the big retrospective as the 50th, but I think this was good, you know? Um, 
And plus, we kind of also had that with Power of the Doctor anyway. So, uh, so I'm happy. I'm satisfied with this, and I'm excited to get with to get going with the new Doctor. Maybe, maybe that's what we'll call him, the new. Except that kind of gets a new Super Mario Bros. problem. Like eventually, he's not going to be the new Doctor anymore. But we'll see. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll call him the new first Doctor. That sounds wrong. I don't know. We'll think of something. Other than the 15th Doctor. We'll just call him Shudigawa. Anyway. With all of that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist with all of my Doctor Who reactions, as well as another playlist for all of our classic Doctor Who reactions, if you want to go check those out. There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.